Hello, I'm Loz and welcome back to Grumpa's Workshop. In this episode, I'm going to be talking a little about back saws and my first attempts at cutting a straight line without chopping any bits of my fingers off. Let's crack on. Right, first things first, change of attire. This is the attire of a proper bench joiner. Notice formal shirt and tie, although for practicality the tie is usually tucked into the shirt so it doesn't drop into your glue pot when you're boiling it. And proper canvas workshop apron. I can feel a rant coming on about modern aprons and designer aprons, but this is a proper one. Just two pockets to catch the sawdust. Tied up round the back and tied in a bow at the front. No fripperies. Concessions to practicality, you can roll your sleeves up to the elbow to stop your cuffs getting stuck into the stuff. Today I'm talking about my first attempts at cutting with back saws. You'll have seen the previous one where I got all these lovely, lovely Veritas saws. So I thought I'd demonstrate some practice uh, shots I've picked up from a new book which is the love of my life at the moment and I'll share that in a minute. I'm going to try cutting the lines on here but I thought I'd show you the difference between what I've been getting so far and what I'm hoping going forward. This is the Venom Tenon Saw, 12 teeth per inch, double ground. It's a hard point so it's a disposable and this one's probably older and more battered than it should be. I should have thrown it out a while back. Double ground because it cuts on the forward and the back slope and it's designed to be a bit of a general purpose saw. It's the thing you buy to throw in a tote for handwork out on the building site. I've not been getting good results from this even from you but I'll show you what this does then I'll compare it to the Veritas crosscut saw that's 14 teeth per inch so it's slightly more teeth per inch we'll see how that goes and then the little teeny tiny baby Veritas crosscut saw at 16 teeth per inch so I'll just show you not forgetting this has a one millimeter carbon steel blade these have half a millimetre, so that in itself, even allowing for my candidness, that should be a finer cut on these two. So let's see how it goes. So here we go. I've drawn some lines at right angles across the top and down, and I'm going to see how I do. First of all, from what I remember, my old dad and Sir te teaching me, left foot, if you're right handed, left foot forward, right hand almost like a martial arts stance shoulder in line with, with the line you, you're going to cut and not the flesh the nail against the edge of the line few drawbacks to get it started I'm over egging the cover now, I think and then keep the shoulder, elbow and hand in line looking at the reflection in the blade you know it's at right angle when the reflection of that back edge of the wood is in a straight line in the reflection nice and smooth I'm supposed to treat it as I was holding a baby bird. Not that I've ever held a baby bird, but I think it's great. There we go. That's a standard cross cut. I'll try the baby one. <laughs> Let, oops, fell out. A full stroke, not pressing down too hard. And that one 
one's gone skew with. I have to be more careful with that one. And then, uh, what am I doing? And then I will show you the cheap old disposable one. Oops. And this is sticking. Doesn't seem to want to do a smooth cut in either direction. Well, triceps are really killing me, and I wasn't trying to push hard. That was a dog's dinner, so that's going. Bless it, did its best over a couple of years. I'll show you the standard of the cuts. So 14 teeth per inch, 16 teeth per inch, and that's the old multi-purpose hard point tenon saw. That's why people give up on the disposables. There's no way that is ever going to be a finished edge for a joint. Which is fine if you're just cutting ends off and you can put it on a shooting board with a hand plane. Or trim it with a block plane, but these are more like what we can do. There you go. Right, that's just a start. Now, I warned you I was going on a hand tool journey as well as fitting out a hybrid shop. And I found a mentor for that, it's Michael Pekovic. I found him on the Fine Woodworking YouTube channel. Apparently there's a magazine behind it. And I found his book, The Why and How of Woodworking, A Simple Approach to Making Meaningful Work which seems to sum up the time, the remaining time I have, that I'm going to spend in this workshop. So it started off, what I'm starting off with is basic hand sawing techniques. Learn to trust your back saw. That exercise I'm going to do now is the first one and then it gradually gets more and more complicated as you, you learn to cut to a line and then cut out things like dovetails. I've got myself set up with a week's worth of practice, just on rips and then cross cutting and I'll check back in a week and show you how and if I'm progressing. In the meantime I've one more little exercise to show you and then I'll crack on with an easter egg about what's coming up next. Are we okay? Good. So the idea is saw down two lines of saws and then half the saw cut each time till you, you run out of wood or the thing falls apart. Excuse the forearm. And then split those two lines. this last one in two. Come on. Oh I can. Wow that's a very encouraging first attempt. Need a bit more practice with keeping to lines but overall gobsmacked and encouraged. Well thanks for staying and watching so far. Very appreciated. Well that's it for the update on my back saw progress. I'll keep you posted on the saw cuts I'm doing and how I'm progressing with that. Of course hand tools doesn't end for me. I've got to add chisels to that and hand planes. All that's coming up on the hybrid workshop side. Over the past week I started batching out a commission for number one daughter, little rustic holiday Christmas stars that we got off Pinterest. She's got a couple in hand, even had a play with my Ori bandsaw to help out. Then I started filming for this channel and I got part way through and the toy bandsaw broke because I was abusing it. So pending getting a new blade, I can see 
a toy bandsaw refurbishment video coming up. Ahead I've got to finish off behind you the little portable uh, Traxxor cutting station. Uh, I've got to finish drilling the dog holes in it and the sacrificial strip for the line of the Traxxor which means I've got to now upgrade the old work zone track saw which needs a good clean out and a new blade and of course the track needs a new plastic sacrificial strip and maybe a replacement of a couple of the engineering screws that hold the track together so that'll be a video I'm having problems with charging so I'm going to sort out some of the wall cabinets and that's going to be a mixture of purely shop made stuff and bought in and assembled stuff so there's going to be a charging station video coming up as well. That's it for now. Thanks for staying. I hope you've enjoyed your time in Gunpar's workshop. I have having you here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the bell. I won't flood you with stuff but I'm hoping you enjoy enjoying me on the journey. Let's crack on then.